Hello and welcome to another coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I'm going to program a fireworks simulation. Pew, pew, bing. Um, and I'm going to program it from scratch in JavaScript in the browser. The version that's running actually behind me is a version that I've made in processing, a Java-based platform. The code for the one behind me and the one that I will make in this video will both be available in links in the description. And at the end of this video, I'm, I'm hoping to return back to this processing one and also uh, turn it into 3D fireworks. This might have a three-dimensional like quality to it, but it's really just two dimensions. Um, OK, so here we go. So let me minimize this code, which was the processing version, get rid of that. And I have a blank JavaScript can HTML5 canvas, and I have some JavaScript code. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to have, uh, I want to have this idea of a particle. I need to have a particle. So I'm going to just write a particle uh, a, a constructor function uh, where, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to, the particle should have a position, which will be a vector. The particle, well, I need to use physics here, is going to have a velocity, which will right now be just 0. And the particle is also going to have an acceleration. So I'm going to kind of custom bake a physics engine. This is the same sort of model that I use in all my Nature of Code tutorials and videos about physics. But I'm, and I'm just going to kind of bake this from scratch really quickly. And then I'm going to add uh, a function called update. And that function does what? It takes the velocity and adds it to the position. And it takes the uh, acceleration and adds it to the velocity. Now, where does it get acceleration? Well, the, I need to have a function. I'm going to call it apply force. And in that function, I'm going to get some sort of force. And I'm going to add that force to the acceleration. This is the idea of force accumulation. Force equals mass times acceleration, or acceleration equals acceleration equals fo force equals mass times acceleration, or acceleration equals force divided by mass. But I'm going to eliminate mass for simplicity. So acceleration equals force are all of the forces of a moment added together. So once I do that, I also need to make sure that um, after I update the particle each frame, that I multiply its acceleration by 0 to sort of clear it out, because the acceleration at each moment in time is going to start with 0. OK. So now, i am kind of got this. But the last thing I need to do with this particle is I need to have a function, I'm going to call it show, which draws, just for simplicity, just draws the particle at um, where, 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 uh, uh, makes it as a point, this.position.x and this.position.y. And what I'm going to do, just for, um, one thing I learned recently about P5.js, which by the time you watch this video in the future may not really be the case anymore, but if I set the stroke and the stroke weight up just in setup and don't set it over and over again, it sometimes can run a lot faster. Um, so just to test that things are working, I'm going to uh, make a variable called a firework. And I'm going to say that firework is a new particle which lives in the center of the window. And I'm going to say here in background, firework, uh, in draw, I'm going to say firework.update and firework.show. So I want to now go back to my sketch and see, ah, I have some errors. So particle.js, let me make this a little bit bigger. That's really big, but uh, particle.js line uh, number six has an error. Uh, let's see, particle.js, this.apply force equals, ah, function is spelled with a C. Let me refresh. There we go. So you can see there's the particle in the center. Things are working so far. Uh, the next thing I want to do is let me give, let me have this particle start uh, at a random width and all the way at the bottom of the window. And let me give that particle a velocity pointing up. So let me say its velocity is negative 4 pointing up. Let me run this. There we go. We can see it's going up. Each time I refresh it, it starts in a new random location and starts going up. So we're getting somewhere. The next thing that I want to do is see if I can add some gravity. So I'm going to make a glo gravity a global variable. And it's going to be a vector that does what? It points down. So negative, uh, no, pointing down is positive. So 0, comma, I'm going to say 0.2. And then I'm also going to say firework.apply force gravity. So I'm now adding gravity to that particle. So let's run this. Uh, acceleration is not defined. Let's go back to the particle. Uh, where, 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 where? Uh, this dot acceleration. I'll always forget the this. Let me refresh. Uh, didn't make it very high, but that's sort of reasonable. So let's make the particle's velocity a lot bigger, like negative 10. 
Okay, so that's good. So we can see, so this is the start of our fireworks simulation. Something shooting up from the bottom, and then at some point it's going to explode and make a lot of particles. But before I could do that, what I want to have is just have a lot of things shooting up from the bottom continuously. So let's get that going. So instead of having uh, one single firework, what I really want is to have an array of them. And actually what I want is for the firework to be its own object. So I'm going to create a firework uh, op, uh, function, sorry, and a constructor function. And the first thing I'm going to do is it's going to have a, a local variable, which is, a, a, so I'm, gonna, I'm basically going to do what I did here, right? I want it to have in this firework object, I want it to have a particle. It's going to have that particle. The firework itself can have an update function. And whoops, what happens in the update function? It does all these, these, these things. It adds gravity and updates that firework. And then I'm going to also have a show function for the firework object. And I, have a, I can see I have a syntax error, uh, which I'm going to fix in a second. So the idea here is the particle, right? A particle is an individual particle. This firework object right now is one particle. But the firework object is also going to, in a moment, not just be the particle moving up, but suddenly all the particles that explode from it. So I need this object to keep track of that individual particle and then also an array of particles. But this should at least get me now if I say uh, um, firework.push new firework. And then I should be able to say firework. Uh, I should be able to say, oh, fireworks should be an array. Then I should be able to say, look at all of the fireworks dot a length, i plus plus. And you know, I could use a for each loop, but I'm choosing not to just for clarity. Um, update fireworks uh, index i dot show. OK, here we go. So now, OK, firework is not defined in line six. Uh, yep, I need the. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm going to do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> Somebody composed that song for me. Uh, and run this again. There you can see. OK, so it happened. And now what I'm going to do is I have this line of code that puts a new firework object in the array. And I could put that line of code in draw. And if I put it in draw over and over and over again, it's just making these fireworks, making these fireworks. I don't want to make them that often. So I am going to say if random 1 is less than 0.1. So every frame, there is a 10% chance of making a new firework. Let's try that. That's a little bit better. So it's making them kind of randomly every so often. So that's a good start. And now what I also want to do is, you know, I think this should be a random value. So let's say random between negative 15 and negative 5. So that way, they don't all go on. And so that, the range might be off there. Let me make the range a little bit calmer. Let's do this. So anyway, you get the idea that they're, not, they're also not all going to just go up to exactly the same height. So now we're pretty good. We've got our system of the fireworks going up over time. But I need to figure out what's the point where I want them to go poof and explode into a bunch of particles. OK, so how do I do that? Here, in the update function, one thing I should edit point, timeout, back. <laughs> um, I, what I need to do is I want to check. Uh, something I could do is I say, how do I know when the firework gets to the top point? Well, its velocity is negative. Its velocity is negative. Its velocity is negative in the y direction. Now it's 0. Now it's positive. Now it's positive. I want it to explode the moment it reaches that top point. So I can say if this dot firework dot velocity is le pointing down is greater than 0, is greater than or equal to 0, this is the moment where I want it to explode. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say this dot firework equals null. So I'm just going to like set the firework to null so that um, uh, it's like that will make it disappear essentially. So in the, and, and I'm going to need some, like I'm going to have to say if this dot firework. So I only want to update, apply force and update it if it exists. And I also only want to show it if it exists. 
So let's just see, you know, there's lots of other ways I could do this, but this is just going to be a sort of way of me tracking. I, I could have actually a Boolean variable like exploded or something. I might, I might change it to that later, but let's see how this works. So, oop, hmm, that's weird. <laughs> uh, if this, oh, well, that's, if the y component of the velocity, right? If the y component of the velocity. Let's add that. Ooh, cannot read velocity of no. Where did that happen? Ah, OK, well, this is an issue. So this little bit can go inside here, like also as long as it exists. There, you can see now it's disappearing the moment it kind of gets to the top. So that's good. And what I want is when it gets to the top, I want it to just go into a whole bunch of particles. So I actually kind of feel like I'm going to just change this just for to be, I'm going to say this dot exploded is false. As long as not this dot exploded, fly force, if it's then say this dot exploded equals false. Because as long as this, uh, as long as not this dot exploded. I, I think I would prefer to use a Boolean variable uh, if it equals true. So this should be the same exact result, but I'm not doing the sort of null thing. OK, so I used a Boolean variable to track when it's exploded. Now, what do I do when it explodes? Well, what I need to do is I need to suddenly, right here, I'm going to just say this dot explode. So I want to put this in a separate function. And I'm going to write a function now called this dot explode. And what do I need to do in this function? I need to make a whole lot of particles. Let's make 100 of them. So for var i equals 0, i is less than 100 i plus plus. What I need to do is say var p equals a new particle. And where should that particle start? So it's about to explode. Where should that particle start? It should start where? This dot fireworks position dot x and this dot fireworks dot position dot y. So I need to make a whole lot of these particles. And now I need an array. The firework object, in addition to keeping track of this sort of like seed firework, should keep track of this dot particles an array. So it has an empty array, and I am now going to say particles dot push p. Okay? Particles push p. Now, what I also then need to do is, and I'm going to just do this here, right here. What I need to do is display all those particles index i dot show. So, oh, and this has to be this dot particles, and this has to be this dot particles index i dot show. So what I've added here is the moment the particle reaches the top, it makes 100 new particles, and then draws all those. So let's see what this looks like. Oops, cannot read show of undefined firework JS index 30. Oh, this should be this dot particles dot length, because I don't want it to show non-existent particles. That array is only going to have 100 as soon as, as soon as it is exploded. Let's run this again. Look at that. Oh, it made 100 particles, none of which move or do anything. Pretty weird, right? Well, first of all, why aren't they moving? Well, I forgot something. I forgot that I also should call uh, here in update. I should also call for all of those particles apply force uh, gravity. And for all those particles, I have to update them. So I need those particles to experience physics as well. Oh, look what's happening. It's making those fireworks, but they're all why? What happens when you make a new particle? It shoots straight up. So I need to make those particles in a different way. So let's look at how I'm doing that. If I go back to the particle object, the particle is always made with a velocity that randomly points up between negative 12 and negative 8. So I could use like inheritance and have like a different, two different kinds of particles that inherit. But I think what I'm going to do is just add, just add a third argument here and I'll call it uh, exploder. And I'll say <laughs> if exploder, I don't like exploder, that sounds violent. I'm already using explode, I guess. Uh, I'm going to call it. Um, Firework, uh, if firework, make the velocity that way. Otherwise, 
make the velocity. And I'm, a, I, I'm just going to do something different just so, I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to say p5 dot vector random 2D. So I'm going to have any random direction, okay? So if that's Boolean var variable is true, it's going to make it as like one of those original firework things. So let me go back to this firework object. And this particle, it needs the last argument of true. These particles, um, it needs the last argument is false. But in JavaScript, if I don't, I could also just pass nothing in, and that variable will have the value of undefined, which will evaluate to false. So this should now, if I refresh this, we can see that I'm getting something closer. So now, why are they, why are they exploding in this perfect circle? Well, the reason why they're exploding in a perfect circle, oops, I have some old <laughs> notes from a computer vision tutorial, is I'm giving them a random velocity, which is a unit vector all of length one. So they're all going to explode out in a perfect circle. So one thing I might do is just have those, the lengths of those vectors be a slightly random length. But, and I'm not going to do this in this tutorial, but you should make heart fireworks, for example. So what if you could figure out, uh, if I draw a heart like this from the center, vectors pointing out to the edges of a heart. So you could actually, or you could use, you've got a fireworks that display letters or particular kinds of shapes. So the way that you pick those initial velocities of that explosion can really make hearts or rainbows or unicorns or whatever kind of shapes you can imagine that you might like to make. So I encourage you to do that as a kind of riff off of this. You can also notice that right now it's running really, really slow. So that's another thing we're going to have to fix. But let me just go back to here. And I am going to, um, uh, where was I? Under particle. Now the other thing I want to do, um, is I actually want to, in the particle object, I think I want to keep track of this, this whether it's the original firework or the particle, because I want to like do other things that are different. So I'm going to say this. Um, because I also want, oh, you know what? I'm, but I'm, I'm going to leave that for later. OK, so let me fix this and say um, random 2D and then this dot velocity multiply by something like, I'll show, I know what I'm going to do in a second. Multiply by between, um, you know, uh, uh, two, uh, one, and six. So now its uh, magnitude is going to be scaled uh, by some random amount. Let me run this again. Oh, OK, that didn't work. What did I not do right? Let me look at this. This dot velocity multiply, oh, pff, random, a random value between 1 and 6. OK, so you can see now they're really <laughs> exploding kind of like wildly. There's also too many of them, so I can't really see what's going on that well. So I'm going to go back to the sketch and make them like quite a bit less often. Lost power, but I'm back now. And where I w just was is I was saying, if this is not one of the seed fireworks particles, if it's not one of the seed firework particles, let's take its velocity and multiply it by something like 8.85 so that it slows down, um, slows down every uh, frame. And you can see that kind of gives it this sort of like burst out that sort of slows down and stops. Now there's sort of a funny thing happening where they're still there. And when you see a firework, it explodes and kind of like fades out. And you know, I'm not going to get too crazy with visual dressing here. You can make stuff sparkle and have trails and glow and all sorts of stuff like that. But at least, at least add something where the fireworks fade out. So what I want to add is a variable. Oh, I already did because that's before the power ran out. <laughs> I'm going to add a variable called this.lifespan equals 255. And what I'm going to do is in the update function, I'm going to say as long, also, if it's not one of the seed ones, I want that lifespan to uh, go down by one. And this, maybe I want it to go down. Let's actually have it go down by four each frame. And what I want is for the particle to uh, have a stroke, which is its lifespan. So, uh, so I want to give it some alpha. So I'm going to say if it's not the, uh, the sort of seed firework, do that to the stroke. Otherwise, uh, just have a regular stroke. And then also, let's make them stroke weight 2, and we'll make the, uh, those a little bit thicker. So let's see what this looks like now. Oh, is it running really slow? No. 
Oh, lifespan is not defined because I need to say this dot lifespan. Let's try that again. So you can see here, now this is a little bit better. Now, <laughs> you know, I should fiddle with these values, like maybe this should be, uh, you know, 0.9, and its initial values should actually be between like 2 and 10, and whoops, uh, and over here, we can see what that looks like now, and whether this is better or worse, I don't know, but I'm going to let you sort of like consider that on your own, but I now have the basic idea. You can see very quickly now, though, it's starting to run rather slow. So we're losing a lot of frame rate here. Why are we losing a lot of frame rate? Well, it doesn't matter whether the particles have faded out or left the screen. I'm never, I'm never getting rid of them. So there's a bunch of things I need to do. Number one, I need to say, I need to figure out a way of getting rid of particles. So here in, this, um, in the Fireworks system, what I need to do as I'm looping through all the particles, first of all, I actually want to loop through the list backwards because I'm going to do something where I'm going to start plucking them out of the list. And if the list is shrinking, it's contracting from the end. It works better if I'm going through it backwards and taking things off the, the, the back end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this loop to say go from particles.length minus 1 and greater than or equal to a 0 and i minus minus. Let's make sure that still works. So nothing's changed, it's still working. And what I need to do, ah, go away, finder. <laughs> what I need to do now is say, okay, well, if this particles index i is done, then this dot particles dot uh, splice i. So splice is a JavaScript function that deletes something from an array, and you can actually splice at i a bunch of things after it, but I just want that one particle. So if the particle is done, splice, well, how do I know if it's done? I need to write a function that says if it's done. So in particle.js, I've got another function I need to add. I'll just add it over here, this.done. And what I'll do is I'll say if, if this.lifespan uh, is less than 0, then return true. So that lifespan, which is counting down, else return false. So let's run this. It's hard to say, oops, we have an error, particle.js line 30. Uh, line 30 here, this.done equals function. So now I have no way of knowing if it's actually removing the particles. It does seem to be like performing a bit better, like not slowing down. So those particles are being deleted. But they're actually still a firework object, the system object in that list. So what I want to do now is add over in the firework object also a function that says this.done. And how do I know if that thing is done? Well, it is done if that particle is exploded and this.firework. Sorry, this.particles dot length equals zero, right? The particle system itself is done as long as it's in a state of having exploded and there are no, and all those particles have faded out. So if that's the case, I should be able to say return true, otherwise return uh, false. So now I can go back to the sketch here and what can I do here in this sketch? I also want to loop through this thing backwards fireworks.length minus 1, i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus, and I want to say if fireworks.length, oh, sorry, fireworks.done, ah, fireworks index i dot done, then fireworks in the, uh, splice i comma 1. So now, and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add just, to make sure this is all working, I'm going to add console.log fireworks dot length. So now we should be able to see, you know, as a, you can see that that length is going down. So it's never going to be too many things on the screen. So performance wise, it's going to work fine. So this now is, and you know, JavaScript canvas drawing can be a little bit slow, but you can see I've got kind of, you know, with 100 particles per system, it's kind of running reasonably well. Now we can make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, for example, I could um, add, oops, I could add a little bit of alpha to the background, meaning have the background um, transition in, to, and we'll have each firework draw a little bit of trail. Let's see how this looks, right? That has a little bit more firework-like quality to it. That's nice. Then, of course, I could say, well, let me give it a 
color mode of HSB. And I could say for each firework, let's, for each firework system is going to get its own color. Uh, so uh, it should get a hue value is a random hue. And then, ooh, every time I make a particle, I'm going to also want, so the system gets a hue, and then I'm going to want to send that hue into, um, let's do that before the last argument here, into the particle object so they can use it as well. Uh, so I, anytime I make a new particle, even in the explode function, I also make new particles. So I'm going to say this dot hue and false. And then now in the particle object, I can add a variable to get that hue value. And then I can say uh, stroke is the hue 255, 255. Hue 255, 255 uh, with, uh, with no alpha. And now when you run this, we can see we have, now we have rainbow. Oh, how come I lost the trail? That's weird. What did I do to lose the trail? Oh, you know why I lost the trail? is because I changed it to use the color mode to HSB. And the background is now doing something weird. So this should fix that, I think. Whoops. Ah. Look at that. I wonder if this is a bug in P5.js that we've just found. Well, I'm going to do something here, which might make things run a quite a bit slow. But I'm going to just change the color mode to RGB here. And in each particle, right before the particle is drawn, I'm going to change the color mode to HSB. And let's see if that works. There we go. <laughs> so uh, that should be, I think that seems like a bug to me. It's like there should be a way to have an alpha with the HSB color mode. But now we've got it working. Um, and you can see, there we go. So there could be a lot of finesse here, right? I could have those velocities go at an angle. <laughs> I could think more thoughtfully about what the velocities of the bursting particles are. I could have uh, a variable amount of particles. Um, I could think more thoughtfully about the design. I could actually store a list of history of the positions to draw a trail myself. I could use like textures. I could use something called additive blending, maybe I'll, um, to make things appear more glow-like. But, um, but you can see here, here's the basic idea. So I encourage you to take my JavaScript code and make some improvements on it. And I want to make a 3D WebGL version of this. But it's, before I'm ready to do that, I'm, this, this kind of concludes this video. But I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my processing one. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to my processing sketch, which is basically 100% ex exactly the same code that I just wrote. But it is, oh, it's doing it full screen. I forgot that. It's doing it. So one of the things about using Java in a desktop environment is I can kind of get a bit more speed out of it. So I have now this full screen application. But this is still 2D. So what I want to do with this one, and let's, um, let's take off the full screen for a second just so I can kind of see it a bit more clearly. Let's make it 800 by 600. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to P3D. Each particle, when it gets drawn, is a point. But I'm going to say um, push matrix. I'm gonna, I need to do three. Actually, I could just use, I'm going to do, do this anyway. I'm going to do translate to add that z axis. And I'm going to say uh, point at 0, 0. So let's just make sure this still runs. Oops, they're all shooting off above the screen because when I made it smaller, the initial velocity uh, should uh, be less strong. So let me just run this again. I'll fix that again later. OK, so that's still working. Now what I want to do, though, however, is these particles, when it explodes, somewhere, somewhere I create that vector, the random vector, probably in particle system, that firework object. Uh, and uh, yes, and then it makes a new, right here, it makes a new random 2D vector. I want this to be random 3D. Let's look at that. Let's see if this works. Now, can you see anything different here? I'm not so sure you can. 
but technically speaking, it should be a random 3D vector. Let's see if we can now actually start to rotate the scene to see if this really works. So I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to import a library called PZCam, which I always, which I've been doing, which uh, I can now say I can add a PZCam object, and I can say a cam equals new PZCam this, and I'm going to say 500, like I want to look at it from 500 pixels away. The other thing that I need to do is when I make the initial particles, um, their location, uh, sorry, when I make that initial particle, its location should be random. Uh, PZCam makes everything relative to the center, 0, 0. So I want to look for random negative width divided by 2 to width divided by 2. And then I also want to change the bottom of the screen is now height divided by 2. So let's run this and see what happens. Ooh. Ooh, PZCam. Oh, OK, hold on. PZCam is very unhappy with my oh, clearing of the background technique. <laughs> so I'm going to lose the trails. I can get those back in another way and just say background 0. Ah, I forgot about that once I have PZCam. OK, now let's start manipulating the scene. Can you see? I'm looking at it from above now. Yeah, so you can see I need to make a lot more of these to be able to see this more easily. Let's add, let's have a lot more being added. Um, and let's also make the stroke weight of these particles uh, much bigger. And let's have their lifespan last a little bit longer. Um, and let's run this. And OK, so now, and let's actually just make this full screen again, because that might help. Uh, so I want to ma also make the initial random velocity much bigger. And I'm going to go back and make this full screen uh, in P3D. And let's see if we get some nice 3D fireworks here. Ooh, that I can kind of like, yeah, you can see there they are. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh yeah, they are 3D, but they're all like in one plane. So I should also probably mess with where they start. <laughs> okay, so let's mess with where they start. So this starting location is, uh, oh, it happens here, which is a particle, and I don't give it a Z location. It's Z, ooh, new particle, a random, uh, okay, hold on. The new particle gets a random X, Y, and a Z. And it should have that x, y, and z. And so let's give it a z random. And then let's give it a random z, which is going to be sometime, somewhere between negative 300 and 300. And so I'm going to run this. OK, now let's sort of zoom out and look. There we go. So we can see uh, that's not, so there is some z depth there. It's not very much. Let's make that more extreme. I'm pretty sure, did I get it? Well, should know now. Yeah. OK, now you can see I've got 3D fireworks. <laughs> so, and then you can see that I could probably do something where I have them burst out quite a bit more. And I now have them upside down. So anyway, you get the idea. I, you can play with this more. So I encourage you, <laughs> I'm going to post in the description of this video, the processing code. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, the processing code for the 3D fireworks, as well as the browser JavaScript code. Uh, I need to get rid of the full screen thing. It has to stop. Stop. As well as the, um, I lost. I lost everything. Ah, come on. No, come back. Uh, fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. Somebody see it, fireworks, P5 as well as the, this code, the JavaScript version of the 2D fireworks. And I hope that you will make pretty shapes out of them. I hope that you will add angles. I hope that you will think of different ways of doing this and come up with a creative take on this and post it, share it with me in the comments or on Twitter or whatever, wherever you find on the internet to share it. And I hope you enjoyed this quick coding challenge, wasn't very quick probably, uh, of, of how to program a fireworks simulation from scratch. Thanks for watching.